Where do I begin? <laughs> so I'm making a video for you guys regarding microneedling, PRP, vampire facials. I want to kind of discuss the difference and definitely clear up, I feel like, a lot of confusion that is out there. Um, excuse my background. We're really going to work on this. I feel like this is super amateur, but one, I don't care. <laughs> and two, I haven't finished my makeup room, so it's definitely in the works. So, first couple of things. A lot of this information that I have gotten is from educators that I have taken their classes um, in microneedling, studies that I have done myself, as well as um, Brandy, my friend who owns Unmarked Beauty and Wellness. She has a location in Chandler as well as Gilbert. She did my PRP underneath my eyes. She's absolutely wonderful. She was an ER nurse for 15 years and then just found love for injectables. So now she does injectables. So a lot of this information is, you know, given to me through all of these different resources. And I really feel the need to educate you guys, especially for, I mean, multiple reasons, you know, you are paying for a service that you feel like should be benefiting your skin. Um, you are paying for a service with money that you have worked very, very hard to get. And I don't want you guys getting services that is damaging your skin. Whether or not you choose to come to me for the service, I literally, I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you are going to a salon down the street. I just want to make sure that you guys are educated with what you need so that your skin is benefiting. You're not hurting your skin. You're not doing things that are damaging it, that are going to be damaging down the road. Things like that. And so I think it's really important to help educate. And so I guess that's just why I feel like it's super important to make videos like this. And this is not going to be the last one. This is going to be the first of many. <laughs> so um, just to start off a little bit of background, microneedling is very, very different from a PRP facial as well as the vampire facial. Just so you guys know, the vampire facial became huge, as many of you will know, through Kim Kardashian. And they actually, I found out from Brandy, patented the phrase vampire facial, which I think is absolutely brilliant. It doesn't matter what you think about the Kardashians, the fact that they thought to patent something like that is absolutely insane. So, um, snaps for the Kardashians because, again, no matter what you think about them, they are businesswomen when it comes down to it. So, um, I can't tell you how often I get photos on Instagram. I mean, daily at this point that are doing microneedling and the client's face is covered in blood. I can't express how dangerous that is and how wrong that is. Um, if you are an esthetician, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> and I don't really think it matters what state you're in. As an esthetician, you cannot draw blood. And if you are, I mean, not even drawing blood like from a vein, you cannot draw blood anywhere on the face. Drawing blood in the sense of like seeing blood and an amount of blood that I've seen in these pictures, it's not okay. So as the consumer, you need to understand that looking at these photos, though that is very incorrect. And a lot of people will ask me, well, why do they post things like that then? They post things like that to draw you in. You see that photo and you're like, what is that? And then you start reading and you're engaged. And now they're like, oh, well, if it's going to get rid of my wrinkles and my scars and, 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 I totally want to do that. And then you're going to do it. But there's a couple of things very, very wrong with getting micro needling done with that amount of blood on your face. There are so many things that could potentially go wrong when doing micro needling like this. Again, this is completely incorrect. When you are microneedling, you should never see blood. You want the skin to become pink or red, and that is it. You don't ever want to draw blood. Pinpoint bleeding is okay. That is literally just when a pinpoint of blood happens. But when you are going over the face and 
especially going over certain areas and causing bleeding, that's causing way too much trauma to the skin. You're causing unnecessary inflammation, as well as you're literally just crossing your fingers, hoping that your client is going to heal the way that they should. And if they don't heal the way that they should, you're now going to double the scarring that is already on their face. If they're coming to you for scarring, maybe they have some acne scarring, and you are improperly microneedling their skin, you can absolutely cause additional scarring. I think it's very unfortunate that people are putting out content like this that is, again, extremely counterintuitive to what we should be doing um, as estheticians and you know, beyond that, nurses that do injectables and things like that, we need to be educating our clients on what is right and what is wrong. And those pictures are wrong. If you are a consumer watching this, please just pay attention to what you are looking at. And if you have any questions, ask an esthetician that you trust, whether that's me, whether that's, um, you know, your sister-in-law, whether it's your mom, I don't care. Just reach out to somebody that you really trust that you know is giving you their honest, true information. Regarding PRP facials, as estheticians, obviously we cannot do things like this. Brandy with Unmarked Beauty and Wellness, she offers PRP facials. What a PRP facial is, is they draw your blood, they spin it in a machine, and they take the plasma from your blood, and it's a gold color, they distribute it back onto your face, and they microneedle it back into your skin. The PRP is a gold color. Keynote, gold color. It's not red. It's not blood. So again, when you're seeing people posting photos saying that they are doing PRP facials and the customer's face is covered in blood, that's not a PRP facial. PRP is done with plasma. That plasma is put in a syringe. That syringe is, you know, distributed amongst the face, rubbed in a little bit, and then you microneedle on top of that. That's what a PRP facial is. Are we clear on that? So great. I got an example from Brandy of what a PRP facial looks like on one of her clients, and I'm gonna show you guys that right now. Um, in that photo, you will see that her skin is definitely pink. It is not bloody by any means. This client left her office, her facility, just looking a little red, and they did her neck and they did her chest as well. So you can see in that photo that there is no blood and that is exactly how it should be because PRP is platelets from your blood, which is again, gold, not red. So if you're seeing pictures, I'm gonna say it again, on Instagram that are saying PRP facial and they're covered in blood, it's not PRP. Touching on these bloody photos, a lot of people will say, well, how does that happen? When we do microneedling, what it's doing is we either have 12 or even 36 little teeny tiny needles in the top of our pen and it goes directly up and down really fast into the skin. What that's doing is it's causing micro injury and then it's going to force the skin to come back brand new. That is getting rid of fine lines and wrinkles, scarring, it can actually diminish pores as well as any kind of pigmentation. It's absolutely wonderful and by far one of my very very favorite treatments. But I want to make clear, when you get a microneedle facial, you are not leaving bloody. If you are leaving bloody, your esthetician is going way too deep. And the problem with going too deep is, I'm sorry, my hair is constantly a mess. If you follow me on Instagram, you understand that my hair is always doing its own thing. Anyways. So when you get a microneedle facial, again, you will leave and your face will be a little bit pink, maybe red. You will be that way maybe 12 hours. The next day you might be the tiniest shade of pink, but really nothing that anyone's gonna look at you and be like, oh my gosh. So these pictures that I'm seeing on Instagram of girls' faces covered in blood immediately after a microneedle facial. It's not okay. The reason why that's not right is because they are going way too deep. Our pens have depths on them. And so on your forehead, I might do a depth of 0.25. That's in millimeters. And then on the face, I might do a depth of 0.5, depending on how durable your skin is. These girls are using, I don't even know, I would honestly say probably a 1.5. Not suitable for the face. 
what is happening is when they're using this microneedling pen on their guest's face, they are scratching the skin and making you bleed. Because at that point, the needle is so far out of the pen that instead of going straight up and down, it's literally just grazing the skin the entire way. And you're bleeding because you're being scratched. It's not microneedling. So it's completely doing the opposite of what we want to do. And again, when you're leaving bloody, your esthetician is basically crossing her fingers. And again, some people are doing this unintentionally. So sincerely, if you didn't know this information, I am not trying to criticize. I'm really just trying to educate. If you don't know, know these things, that's okay, but start tomorrow to be better. And if you don't know, I know several people that are trainers um, in microneedling that would absolutely love to educate you more in these things. I am not an educator or a trainer for any kind of microneedling, but I've done my own research and I know enough to educate my own two cents. So they're basically just scratching the skin. That is not what we want to do. What we want to do is activate the skin so that it helps produce new collagen as well as helps promote new tissue, new cells, all of that kind of stuff. That is good. Microneedling is good when done properly. So if you are someone who is getting microneedling done and you have been leaving every single appointment with your face bloody, I would highly recommend you switch your esthetician. I can recommend several estheticians to you right now that do microneedling that are absolutely incredible. Brandy with Unmarked uh, Beauty and Wellness being one of them. We do them at Wildflower. I've got a friend named Kelsey that owns um, Beauty by Kelsey in Chandler and she's absolutely wonderful and she does microneedling and she does it so wonderfully. So just understand when you're seeing these pictures on Instagram and their bloody faces, take it as a grain of salt. Understand that maybe that's just someone that is very uninformed. Again, this is not to bash anyone, not to hate on anybody. Simply, my most important thing is that I would, I wanna educate my guests that come and see me. I have had people tell me, you know, I get done microneedling with their face and they're, oh my gosh, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Well, it's not supposed to. <laughs> you know, I wanna make your skin a little pink. You don't need to leave here looking like Edward Scissorhands got a hold of your face. Like that's just not the look we're going for, nor is that a good look for anybody. <laughs> so I hope you guys find this useful. If you have any questions at all, please leave me a comment. I am more than happy to share what I do know. And if I don't have an answer for you, I can absolutely turn you to someone that will. Um, if you are interested in training in microneedling, I have two very wonderful trainers. One that is here in Arizona, she's in Phoenix. And I have another um, trainer that I recently took an advanced training with and she was absolutely wonderful. And um, she is based out of Vegas. So if you are interested in either one of their contact information, if you are a licensed esthetician or a nurse, I'm more than happy to pass on that information to you as well as um, share some resources with you that I have in regards to microneedling. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions, all of your support, all the pictures that you guys send me constantly curious about these things. This definitely has gotten um, my own wheels turning in my own head as far as, you know, education. And I feel like I've learned so much just in the past couple of weeks than ever before. So these videos are really thanks to you guys because I get lots and lots and lots of questions. So thank you so much for taking the time to now sit through this whole thing and I'll talk to you later.